to the Ohio Ram Show. Well, hello everyone. This is Jim Lawyer here with the Ohio Ram Show number 364. The show about ultra cycling, cycling and Ram and all other things cycling. And Lee Kreider here. Uh, we are coming to you because of all the good folks who operate the Race Across America time stations here in Ohio. Time stations 41 in Oxford, Ohio. Time station 42 in Blanchester. Time station 43 in Chillicothe, where Jim holds forth. Hey, did, did I get it all right that time? You did. Excellent job, Lee. Everybody, uh, all the people and crew there, thank you very much from all of our time stations. Well, uh, one of our objectives here is to tell all the good work to do. And, you know, all the staff time stations across the country. Correct. There are so many great people out there doing their jobs. And we just want to take a moment here to remind everybody to be sure and post your comments and your questions uh, either on YouTube or Facebook down there in the comments section. And we'll be sure to uh, bring them to our guests when we get her in here. Jim, you've had your first vaccine. You got a sore arm? Uh, no, it actually was sore for about a day and a half. And now it's all better. I can lift my arm up with no problem. So uh, okay. looking forward to the next one. And, and you, making... couldn't, you couldn't do that before you got the shot, could you? That's right. So I'm, I'm much better. <laughs> Actually, I gained like uh, 10 on my FTP after the shot, so it's doing good. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, have we got any news tonight? We've got a little bit of news. We'll go ahead and start off. Uh, got the pleasure of listening to Nancy Guth talk today on the WCA Women's Series that they're doing. Uh, very good talk. Uh, she talked for about an hour about all of her experiences and uh what it's like to be a woman in cycling etc and it was really good uh, i would recommend you guys check out the next one on april 4th uh it's a free one you just need to go to their uh facebook the wca facebook and they'll have some information and you sign up and then you uh, join the zoom call so it's a great thing uh the other news that we've got again i'm promoting the ride for your for us uh it's a free online event on Saturday, April 10th, which is his birthday. We're uh, celebrating his birthday uh, for this great rider that we lost too early. Uh, it's going to be a 24-hour ride. We're going to start at 5 a.m. Our good friend Chris Hoppo Hopkinson is helping. Uh, Spiegel Bikes is going to be there. And a lot of other great, great ultra cyclists alike will be on there. So come out and join us. There will be more information on the website uh, in the next few days. Uh, Very good. One Very more good. thing that I want to mention is uh, our good friend Rick Z uh, started the Ten Buck Bicycle Club. Uh, it's an online community uh, that's very good. Uh, think about it as, as Facebook for just cyclists alike and uh, without all the politics and all that stuff. Just going to be about cycling. Uh, so give it a check out. Uh, it would be a good thing for all of us to be on there. Okay, very good. That sounds cool quite interesting and next week we're going to have somebody on that i've never met kit uh kit hinter from uh mm -hmm. denver colorado who is going to have an interesting event uh an all climbing day there in colorado and we'll be uh talking with uh, kit that'll be so, a great show yeah it, it should be kind of interesting by yeah. the way <laughs> we've got such an interesting guest today Definitely. I've been looking forward to having her uh, with us. Uh, she was on the show back in 2015, uh, back uh, when we were just kind of stumbling around, <laughs> and we're still stumbling around, but we're, we're, we're stumbling around better now, Jim. There you go, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, a, a little slideshow here to kind of give you a background on Leah Goldstein. She's been a, a, a world kickboxing champion. She was in the Israeli secret police. Uh, and then she turned to cycling. So we could spend all night talking to Leah with all of the stories she's got to tell. But uh, let's just let's stop talking about her and let her do the talking. Hi, Leah. How are you Hi. tonight? Hi, Hi guys. Leah. Hi. We're glad to have you here. Thank so you how are you? How are you? Me. 
How are you doing there in Vancouver this evening? Well, I'm actually in Vernon, so I'm five hours east of Vancouver. I'm yeah, a I, bit I, better for riding, and yeah, we're doing good. It's above zero, yay! So I'm happy. <laughs> not all of British Columbia is in Vancouver, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we sometimes forget that uh, here. So um, I don't know where to start, Leah. Um, you had such an amazing career. Uh, kind of just go over some of the things that you have done in the past quickly with us. Oh my goodness. Well, I started in Taekwondo. Um, I was a junior national champion and then I transitioned to kickboxing at 17. I was a world uh, kickboxing champion. And then I went to Israel. I immigrated to Israel because I wanted to join the IDF, the Israel defense force. Wow. And I was the first female instructor to train the commando. And then I worked for the secret police, uh, the Belush, it's a spying agency. Mm -hmm. And then I started duathlons and that's where I discovered the bike. And so I was a pro racer. I raced with the Canadian national team and the Israeli national team for about 10 years. Then when I retired, I discovered ultra endurance racing and I thought this is perfect. So that's kind of my life in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> that is truly amazing. What did you, did you did you like duathlons and try did you ever do a triathlon or just mainly duathlons? No, I don't. I can't swim very good. I can't swim at all. So that's me too. <laughs> so I understand. Work. I don't <laughs> like the water. So no, actually, um, I did a duathlon. It was a military duathlon, so okay. whatever. Um, and so I didn't even know what I was doing. I had a bike and one of those hair dryer helmets, and then um, <laughs> just running shoes, and we warmed up kickboxing because we didn't know how to warm up properly. <laughs> And so then my instructor who knew nothing about, he was a, a, an intelligence officer. He just said, you better win or you're in trouble, right? So that was pressure. <laughs> there you go, exactly. He gave you a challenge and you stood up to it, yes, huh? Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. So, so, what, so I kind of got hooked on, you know, from that point, from that point, I, I, oh, I discovered the sport, then I started to train more and gotcha. that's kind of how it started. What got you interested in ultra kind of cycling? You know, I remember watching it when it used to be televised when I was a little, you know, little kid. And I thought it was just um, just a huge challenge and, and uh, to push yourself kind of beyond your limit. Um, and so and I kind of from military experience, too. I mean, they kept us up for multiple days and to be functional. So I thought, you know what? I think I have a little bit of a start here. I can I can ride a bike quite decently. So you put that all together and you've kind of developed an ultra endurance rider, right? So that's mm -hmm. kind of how it started. And I planned it, too, when I was pro racing that when I retired, I would transition into ultra endurance racing. Gotcha. OK, very good. Well, <clears throat> I'm just looking here. Um, I thank goodness, Jim, for two screens because I left my sheet behind, which I printed out. Mm -hmm. um, go over. I'm going to go over your Ram history as I have it. Let's see if we have it right. In two, 2011, you were the overall women winner with 11 days, four hours. And I believe Kathy Roach Wallace was the only other woman to finish that year, if I'm correct. In 2012, you uh, won Raw, the race across the West, in two days and 14 hours. And then you had a hiatus. Yeah. You come back eight years later, mm -hmm. 2019, Ram, your second overall among women, two hours behind none other than Daniela Genovese. Now, being beaten <laughs> by Daniela is not is nothing to sneeze at. But here's the interesting thing. Eight years later, you bested your time by nine hours, didn't yeah. you? Amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, it was, that was a long time to take off for sure, you know? So I think that kind of, you know, hurted me in the prep um, for that. But you live and learn, like you forget what it's like to, you know, really train your body when you take that much time off. So I think I kind of jumped the gun a little bit too much. I should have kind of transitioned, waited about two years, but you know me, <laughs> just do it anyways. So that's why I think that just from learning from the mistakes um, that we made and my training mistakes, uh, that I'm, I'm hoping for a better time this year. And I think honestly that this will probably be the fastest time just because, you know, 
I'm going to be 53. So I think now is, is the time to do it for, for speed and to, to have the best round I could possibly have. I think this is going to be the year for me. Gotcha. Well, that leads into a question since you mentioned 53, Rob McCurdy wants to know your comments on how old is too old. Never. <laughs> Never. I <laughs> agree with you totally. You can still breathe. You can, yes. You, know, you can still walk and you can function. You can do anything, right? You know, Definitely. I plan to do this race when I'm 90 <laughs> and finish it in 12 days. So there yeah, you go. Excellent. That's a great. <laughs> Rob great... knows that. Rob knows exactly. I used to coach Rob, right? Okay. And he's an awesome athlete in his 60s. And, you know, and he knows that to me, age is just a number and it means absolutely nothing. Well, I think if anybody could do it, you may be the person. <clears throat> uh, your first ram, you had quite a uh, a lot of problem with Shermer's neck, didn't you? You want to talk about that, and yeah. and what have you done to uh, correct that problem? I still have a problem with Shermer's neck. I mean, even this last ram, I had the apparatus already. Like they already shaved me. They put the tensor bandage into my hair. And it was already tied at the start of the line. If you, I don't mm -hmm. know if you noticed it or not. No. Um, what I did basically is strength training. I, I, I train with a weighted helmet. I never ride without my helmet when I'm on the trainer. Cause you know, in Canada, we're on the trainer a lot. Right. Um, intensive strength training, I think is, is the key. But um, like I said, I, I still feel it. I think it, it, and, and that happens basically Shermer's like when you had multiple injuries, um, you know, uh, it's basically nerve damage. So it's really hard to, to, um, to train that. Right. So you have to go in there with this, you know, with enormous strength in your neck muscle. So that's a big part of my training though, is, is doing strength training, you know, and again, it's the helmet and never, you know, never training without it. Right. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Do you do a lot of training? Uh, I mean, how many hours do you spend on the trainer now as compared to before when you weren't get, preparing for RAM? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> well, okay, I live in Canada, so right. you know, from basically from November till like the end of February, mm -hmm. you're on a trainer. So I would spend like up to 12 to 15 hours. I know that sounds crazy, right? But mm -hmm. I do a lot of it and also too just with early morning rides and night rides i mean i've had people throw bottles at me and slurpees yep. and you know so the risk you know it's it's not worth it um and yeah Definitely. i guess you have more quality when you're actually indoors and if you can really replicate what you're doing outside mm -hmm. so the trainer is a, a huge tool for me right gotcha. and i'm gonna say i'm gonna do 50 50 50 percent of my training is on the trainer 50 percent is is outdoors that's great excellent yeah um, and I believe, didn't you have a pretty horrific accident before 2011, wasn't it? One of your rides, you had an accident just not too long before. Oh, my God, I've had multiple accidents. <laughs> well, I think the, the mother of all crashes happened when we were descending like at 80 kilometers an hour. Um, and then this was in pro racing. And then one girl was trying to kind of tuck in and she leaned into me. And at that speed, I ended up landing on my face, which gave me, you know, an instant facelift. And, you know, I, I broke probably almost every bone in my body. And, and they oh. said, that's it, you know, right, career over, right? Mm -hmm. You know, your ability to walk is questionable. You've got to walk over a cane and you'll never race again, right? And I think at that time, it was one of the worst crashes in the history of the sport. Um, but I did. I, I came out of it. I mean, it was it was a tough challenge. But mind you, that's one of many crashes, right? You know, mm -hmm. I prior to the Olympics, I broke both my arms uh, in France. I broke my back, so <laughs> I could write a book. You know, it's called Nine Lives. <laughs> and, and here, here you are. <laughs> you know. Awesome. That's 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 a tribute to your drive. <laughs> as, as you were telling some of your friends online about being here tonight, you suggested that uh, you had some Ram secrets to share. Is there some deep, dark secret uh, you have? or That I have some deep, dark yeah. secrets? Yeah, you said you had Ram well, secrets. Well, if I had secrets, I'm sure you're not going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to share it. Sure. <laughs> Maybe uh, when I retire, I'll write a book and you'll hear all my secrets. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> uh, how are you dealing with your crew and things with COVID and being from Canada this year? 
and the, the border crossings, etc. It's a challenge. Um, well, as you know, the land borders are closed. Mm -hmm. So my only way to get across is um, I have to uh, hire a commercial carrier, rent a commercial carrier to bring over my RV and follow car. Then I have to fly over to meet them on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, because the land border is closed and I cannot have a Canadian crew because flying back into Canada, there's now a, a three-day mandatory hotel stay that's $2,000, and then you have to quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So my only option was to you know, have an all-American crew, which primarily they are. Most of right. my, you know, 90% of them are from the United States anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge right now. Um, and hopefully, you know, things will remain open by June. So I'm, yes. I'm being optimistic that they will. Definitely. Do you think that's going to impact you not being able to train with them like you would normally? Or do you think it'll be okay that, you know? No, I mean, my crew that I have, this will be their, they were with me in 2011. Okay. They were with me in uh, 2019, and they're going to gotcha. be with me in this one, right? Okay. I mean, let's I'm say I'm I'm a couple of people. I mean, if they lift that two thousand dollar mandatory, you know, hotel yes. stay, then I'll have my uh, Canadian, some of my three of my Canadian crew come with me, right? Okay. But Excellent. if not, that's a huge added expense that yes. is just not, you know, viable right now. Gotcha, Leah. Uh, <clears throat> kind of shift the subject a little bit uh, in this Me Too age. Uh, and in the news here in the United States, quite a bit. There's been a lot about sexual harassment. Um, I once heard you tell a story. I think I saw a video. Uh, you have sort of a unique way, or you had a unique way of dealing with uh, sexual harassment. Could you share? <laughs> I think you know what I refer to what I refer. I don't know if I can share some of that online. <laughs> yes, you can. That's one of those deep dark know. secrets, I don't isn't know if it? That's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's on YouTube, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, are we talking about the Middle East or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I knew what I was getting into. I was the only woman in my division um, in the military, especially in the police force, mm -hmm. you know. So I knew it was coming not only from the commanders, but from other colleagues. So I, you know, I was prepared for it. However, um, there wasn't, you know, anyone that I could go and complain to or, you know, you know, report an incident like there is more support now for sure. Mm -hmm. So it was basically on me to, you know, so I basically just threatened people who gave me a hard time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, to fight fire with fire. Exactly. So, and that was the only way I could survive, right? Mm -hmm. You know, is almost to become one of them um, because that was my only my only choice. I had no other choice, right? So when I got this reputation kind of of being a psychopath, people backed off a little bit, right? You know, that I won't hesitate, trust mm -hmm. me, you know? And I think you have that kind of, you know, and, and, the, and the hard thing is, is when, when a woman is being tough, you know, she's considered like kind of a bitch, right? But when a mm -hmm. man is being tough, well, he's strong and a good cop and, right. you know, he stands his ground. So I had that to challenge as well, right? You know, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking, you know, it, it was, it was tough, but I, that was, that's my secret. There you go. <laughs> Funny sexism way back when, right? You know, there were tough times though. I'm, I'm telling you, they were challenging mm -hmm. for sure especially when you have nobody like no support your support system is you mm -hmm. and you have to figure it out well, you've done a great job thank you <laughs> it, it reminds me there was an old story about a senator who the story was he had pulled a knife on the senate floor against an opponent and he'd been in the senate now for years and years and years and uh, somebody asked him about it and he said no i never did that but I don't tell anybody because it gives you a lot of respect. <laughs> right. So I think that's the kind of approach there. I can relate. <laughs> well, you, you kind of came up through that process when to be a woman in a man's world was a very different thing than it is. Well, it's still a difficult mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. But you're, you were kind of the first troops on the beach, so to speak. Well, I think too that I I had to earn my respect because, you know, I was a um, in base eight when Bachmone it's called, um, and it's a very uh, difficult base to get into physically, mm -hmm. and 
I had to do exactly the same physical task as the men, you know, and I was able to do that, mm -hmm. you know, to, to climb a rope without the use of my you know, legs, to shoot, to jump walls, to, to run fast, to, to do all those crazy military tasks. And I was able to do that because I trained, don't forget, I'm coming back from being a world champion kickboxer right. and I trained extremely, very, very, very hard, right? Mm -hmm. And my, my family is part of, you know, the military and they, they kind of prepared me on what I need to train. Mm -hmm. So when I came into these courses, into the military, I was prepared. Um, and, and that's how I kind of earned my respect is just saying, you know what, just because a woman doesn't mean I can't do it. And right. I did it. And I broke many records and, and that was kind of where I held my ground. Um, and that's how I proved that I can do this job because at least give me the opportunity to prove that I can do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the issue is, is a lot of women don't have that opportunity. However, if I couldn't do the physical part of that, you know, then I would have backed away and said, you know what, it's just not for me. But the things that I wanted to do is I knew I could do them. I just wanted the opportunity to prove it. And that's where the challenge came that I wasn't given the opportunity you know, until I, you know, did it myself. Basically, I found a way. Now, do you think we're doing better in cycling with women? And what would be your recommendation to other women that want to get into the sport, especially ultra? Oh, I think it's 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 grown significantly. Mm -hmm. Women in, in cycling. Um, look, it's an intimidating sport, especially the group rides. I think women will know when you go to a group ride. You know, the men try to drop you, and it's not so welcoming. So, women have created their own groups, and they're mm -hmm. fast. You got lots of strong women. Definitely, it's just the nature of the sport, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With any, even a new a new guy comes into a group, then you know. Oh, we're going to drop him on the first hill yep. or whatever. So it's not as so welcoming, right? You know, right. so, yeah, I think um, it's definitely opened up. And I, I see a lot more women rider and the mm -hmm. level, too, has grown significantly. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. See what Matt's got to say. He says, thank you for being a trailblazer. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, when you're a trailblazer, it's... Uh, you get a lot more scratches than the guy oh, who's yeah. coming behind you. Yeah, I got a few scars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Now, do you have any, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Charities that you're writing for in RAM this year? No, we did last year, but just because of COVID and stuff, right. not knowing if we were going to be able to do this or not. I mean, even in January, we were still on the fence. Is this going to happen? Is this right. not going to happen? February, is it going to happen? I mean, even now we're not 100%. Mm -hmm. So we we couldn't, you know, we, we decided not to just in case it was going to collapse, right? Because it's still you. uncertain. I know we're already, you know, in April, but who knows what's going to happen in the next two months. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, it's going to be a greatly diminished uh, ram, that's for sure. We're mm -hmm. going to miss a lot of the people that we look forward to seeing. And that's sad. I think it's good that they're going ahead with it. But mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, one of those years where there'll be an asterisk, don't you think, Jim? I think so, yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we're not going to see the full competition because our international people just aren't going to make it. I mean... Right. Uh, we've had several people we're going to have on the show who've dropped out, and and uh, that's sad, but that's the reality. But hopefully, there's um, a hope on the hope on the horizon. Right. Mm -hmm. How yeah. do you deal with the mental aspect of ultra cycling? Do you have any secrets there, or is it just in your nature to be able to handle that? Um. I'm going to say it's in my nature. Okay. <laughs> I know that. See, I, you know, I kind of like to replicate what I'm going to go through and, and what I'm going to feel and how the training is going to feel. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the, the biggest thing because, you know, when you're after a goal, it motivates you to really push yourself hard, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there is nothing like Ram. I think nothing you can do or train is more difficult, especially when you're going after, you know, you know, your age group record or the win or whatever it may be, even finishing it in 12 days is still a huge challenge, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think in that respect, anybody who, who trains for this, they're, you know, they're pushing themselves beyond their limits. I mean, you'd have to, or else you, you couldn't finish this race. Exactly. Excellent. Well, you have a book. Uh, you still have that on the market, do you? Yes, it's yeah. called No Limits. Yes. No Limits. <laughs> Excellent. 
It's I think great you can book. get it at the round store. I think they have it with Strauss's okay. book. Yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, on our uh, website, whoops, I got the wrong. Could find me the. Uh, okay, gotcha. Give me a second. On the OhioRamShow.com website. There we go. There it, <clears throat> that's why I have Jim here, Leo. He covered <laughs> okay, all awesome. my mistakes. <laughs> that uh, wasn't a mistake. You planned that. <laughs> that. Yeah, that was planned. The plan. Anyhow, on the OhioRamShow.com website, there's a link to Leah's website. There's a link there to uh, on their website for the book. You say it's in the Ram store? Yeah, in the Ram store, you can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, but it's on, uh, if you'll go there. There's also a link, as I said, to our website and a couple of videos there that you'll find on YouTube uh, that, Leo, uh, that Leah has been a part of in the past, and you can do all that there. So... Um, you might want to take a look at that book. It was Definitely. pretty inspiring. Just Thank like you. Leah. Very Thank inspiring. You. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hey, it's really been great to have you here. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to meet you when you come to our time stations in Ohio. Yes, I will. Yes. Me too. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. It's great to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we will be seeing you here in Ohio. Jim, thank you for what you do. Thank you, Lee. And again, thank you, Leah, for your tremendous amount of work and abilities that you bring forth. Thank you. That means a lot. Thanks so much. And with that, I think uh, we'll say goodbye. This is Gregory Zuber. Thanking you for watching and sharing. Music by Kevin McLeod.